keep on being quiet. Uh -huh. The drum roll. Are we ready? Yes, we are ready. We're rolling. We're focused right in on you, and you are not moving around at all. Here, I'll focus in over there on the X7 I'm bouncing my feet. CAD. Does that yeah. count? But you have to move. I mean, this is video. You well, have to we, move. What are we doing? Today? I have a list. Have That's a list? what we're doing. There's uh -huh. the list. That's the list. So we're doing. We're doing dampers. Dampers. Shock absorbers. Yeah. With them. The, uh, with the announcement, uh, Associated is finally releasing their own big bores. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was appropriate for the... Uh, the next X Factory video cast to talk about dampers. The next and, Paul's uh, workbench yeah, video. Yeah, this is cast. actually video cast eight one, Paul's workbench. Eight point one. Back the work Paul's workbench. Yes. Um but uh you know, I think uh, uh, most of the companies in the industry have moved to big bore shots. Um and I think they provide some benefits and then some drawbacks that maybe people don't think about. Okay. So I wanted to talk about them. So uh let's hear about one of the benefits. Well th the reason I think most people like them is that they uh they feel more plush. They just, when you put them on your car as you go around the track, you just, a lot of bumps and, and ruts and, and small imperfections just seem to melt away, or, you, you know, they don't upset the car as much. Um, additionally, with, uh, with the extra oil inside, it takes longer to heat up, and so they stay um, more consistent through your run. Um, what do you say? I know that was a big thing on, on gas vehicles. In the one-eighth buggies, they went to big bore shocks. I think the low C8 was the first car to have the, the larger volume dampers we see. And uh, for, of course, the eight-scale cars, they're much heavier and over 45-minute, an hour-long main. Like, that extra oil made a huge difference for them. really made the cars easier to drive. Does it make a difference so, in tenth scale? So we're seeing that in, in the tenth scale shocks now. Um, I mean, that's debatable. I think it, it depends on, on what track you're running on, um, what surface it is, and, and how your car is performing. Um, personally, I've seen it make a difference, notably a, a, a noticeable difference one time, um, actually at the Nationals in Joliet, 2010. The track broke apart really bad. It got really rough and bumpy and a lot of potholes. And the Kyosho cars, which were the only ones to have big bores at the time, seemed to do better in the last minute of the race than everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say that, that's the only time I've really seen the... Oops, I've really seen the big boards make a note. Don't drop difference. the shock. Paul. I, I caught it. Don't throw it on I the ground. It. I caught it. Okay. Um, so the so it gives a better back, ride it does, sometimes. It gives a better ride sometimes. sometimes. It's going to be more consistent through the five minutes most of the time. And also people say it lands jumps better. So it can just absorb more energy on landing, you know, that, that impact that you get. Mm -hmm. um, but so this is a damper. This isn't the spring. Isn't the spring supposed to do that? Yes. Um, what does the, what does the 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 damper really do? Right, so if you if you take apart a part of shock, there's the spring element and the damper element, and what you, you use the spring to absorb energy to to slow down the motion of the suspension and to provide ride height, you know, the the height of the car to suspend the car off the ground. Mm -hmm. What the damper does, if you just ran a spring by itself, your car would act like a uh, like a pogo stick. Yeah, you know, it just just sit there and bounce, 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 bounce like crazy. So what mm -hmm. the damper unit does, I think most people know, is, is it, it absorbs, so the spring absorbs the energy upon landing or impact, and then the damper slows the spring and, and absorbs and dissipates that energy as the shock uncompresses. Mm -hmm. That's the ideal situation. So, the, so the, the, uh, the damper isn't really doing the work of suspending the car. Correct. It doesn't suspend the car, but it is absorbing the energy. When I talk about, you know, your car lands, what happens to that energy? You know, yeah, instead of letting the spring go spring, 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 yeah, spring. Yeah, so your car going dun, 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 and mm -hmm. down the road. And there's, there's a small amount of friction in the coil bind, you mm -hmm. know, of the spring, and eventually that would dissipate out. Yeah. But the damper makes it happen in a much more controlled, smooth fashion. Yeah. Um, okay, now are there disadvantages to the big There is one board? big disadvantage um, that I don't think a lot of people necessarily think about. Um, and that is that they're bigger and they are heavier. Um, and specifically... Put them next um, to each other for a second. Let's just see the difference here. And move it over a little bit. Okay, there you go. right there. There, yeah. Um, so in general, a what are considered standard size or small bore shocks are generally around 10 to 11 millimeter internal diameters. Um, and what are considered big bore shocks are 12 or 13 millimeter. Yeah. What have you inside. got inside? What are the two? Uh, this is an associated V2 uh, standard shock, and this is a Yokomo uh, big bore shock, I believe, off the B Max. I've had it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, let's see what the difference. It, it, yeah, is. if if, if you want to see this video, the uh, 
the standard associated shock, and it's filled with oil and piston, ready to go on a car. It actually came off my X7. And you can see it's 12 grams by itself versus this big bore. And the big bore is actually a little bit shorter. No. I mean, mm -hmm. they're both rear shocks, but they're not. You know, the associated is a little bit longer. Oh. 16 grams. So that's horrible. Four grams, that doesn't seem like a lot. But remember, I mean, you put a quarter ounce or seven grams in your car, that's a big setup change. Yeah. And, so and, by running, and the difference is like one by, yeah. third. So by running two big bore shocks on the front of your car, you're essentially adding 10, 12 grams up here on the shock tower. Way up high. And what that's going to cause is a lot more body roll in the corner, and it's also going to cause some, it's going to cause your car to slow down as it rolls over and then as it squares up, because you're moving that, you know, you can, mm -hmm. we think of a pendulum in X-Factor, we would describe the pendulum of a rear motor car. Well, if you think of a pendulum in the, in the vertical direction, you know, it's, it's, with all that weight up high, it's very slow to lean over, and then it takes a lot of energy, and it's very slow to square back up out of the corner. The poor spring has to work like yeah. crazy. So, um... So there is a significant disadvantage in running big yeah, bore yeah. shocks. The, uh, Especially now, if the, you've got four of them on your car. Yeah, oh, we're well, not I mean, talking just front and rear end. We're not yeah. talking just four grams. We're actually talking sixteen grams. It's, it's than, as though you had an extra shock. Ounce. Yeah, half an ounce. Yeah. Um, so I mean, there are benefits. They're, like I said, they're plusher. They feel better on the track. They're more consistent through the run. But I think there are some disadvantages too. And ultimately, you won't have the same fast lap with big bores as you would with small bores. Mm -hmm. You might be able to run that, you know, a, a faster lap more consistently. I should, you know, you, you might be able to run close to your fast lap more consistently, but I think the small bore shocks have the ultimate faster lap time. Okay. Say goodbye, Paul. See you guys.